Okay, hello everyone again and really warm welcome to our webinar this afternoon. Um, thanks um, everyone for, for joining and, and uh, dialing in for the live webinar. As I said, my name is Marika, I work at Unlimited and I'm really, really pleased to introduce you to our host this afternoon to Fatima Vepari from Suka Consulting. Fatima has, um, has been working with Unlimited for a little while now, been supporting our social entrepreneurs and is now kindly um, sharing her, her expertise and her knowledge through, through this webinar. So she will be, she'll be talking, talking to us for about 40 to 45 minutes and then after that we have time for questions, 10 to 15 minutes for questions if anyone's got any. So, so I let I let Fatima to introduce herself properly, um, but in terms of in terms of logistics, I guess for for the webinar, those of you who are online and if this is your first one, then you can see on your dashboard at the bottom of your dashboard there should be a chat function. So for any questions, any issues, any comments throughout the webinar, you can just. Just uh, type in type in your questions through the chat, and then I'll I'll be moderating those on the background, and I can also relay any questions to Fatima at the end. Um, I think that's probably probably all. We will be recording the webinar, so you will get the recording and you'll get the slides afterwards as well. So that's enough from me, and just over to you, Fatima. Okay. Um, well, hello everyone. Uh, welcome. I'm Fatima Vakari, as Marika said. Um, I am just going to start by giving you a little bit of an introduction to Fika Consulting. Um, I started the business back in 2008, so we've just had our six year anniversary, so I'm really pleased about that. Um, in a very short sort of you know, nutshell, we work with organisations and with individuals to help them be more effective. Um, and we do that through a range of services. Um, what I will show you is okay. bear with me for a moment please and um, you might want to be aware this is my first time hosting a webinar so um, I can say a moment ago it all seems to be working well and now it is not true um, Oh, here we go. Right. Maybe there's a slight delay. Okay. We do this, as I said, um, through a range of services. So just very quickly, um, as I'm aware that you're going to get the slide pack, you'll be able to see this for yourself. We do lots of work in the open consultancy. So we actually work in organizations. Um, we actually sort of increase people's capacity and capability. And we do the whole host of sort of consultancy service around what I call the nuts and bolts of people and organization development. So we work with organizations around recruitment, injection, um, building competencies, framework, performance management frameworks, etc. We also do lots of work in leadership and management development. All our programs can be accredited with the Institute of Leadership and Management, if you so wish, um, or not. Uh, we do lots of work in the space around behavior development. So we actually do work related skills training. Um, we work with human resource practitioners, building um, strategic and operational capability, and we also do lots of work with personal effectiveness space, which primarily means we do one-to-one -one coaching, mentoring, we have a signature program for realizing potential. Um, but you can see all of that when you go onto the website if you choose to do that. Um, okay, so that's just a little bit about super consulting. Um, you will only see um, this piece, which is really the objectives for the webinar, which is why I'm hoping you have joined today. Um, so you'll know that there's um, a core element of this, which is around building your emotional intelligence personal, in order for um, you to be more personally effective. Um, I'm not going to repeat these because you have them available to you. But what I will say is that there is an element of knowledge sharing on my part but there are a couple of sort of interactive pieces. What I've also tried to do in here is um, give you some tools that you can take away, both for yourself as well as for use with your team. So I did really actually want to do that um, so you have some tools available to you. Um, okay, right. 
So to begin, I just want to ensure that we're all on the same page when we're talking about personal effectiveness. And really for me, um, this is the, the sort of the definition that seems to work best, which is that uh, personal effectiveness is really about the ability to adapt your personal style, your skills, your quality, in order to achieve high quality results. So personal effectiveness is about sort of what you actually do and put out there in, in relationship with others. Um, but it's also being able to modify your behaviours in order to adapt yourself to the tasks, the situations, and the individuals with whom you are working. So there's a two-way relationship. It's not just about sort of what you present, but also being able to adapt in relation to the environment. Now, emotional intelligence, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about this piece in particular. Emotional intelligence actually requires us to be effective in our awareness, our control, and our management of our own emotions and those of other people. Now, this isn't to say that you are going to manage other people's emotions directly, but it's being able to respond and adapt to and actually help people manage themselves. And in the position of a leader or a manager, that is a core skill, I would suggest. Um, this is also known after an emotional intelligence or often known as an emotional quotient. And much of this um, work comes from Daniel Goldman, who some of you will be aware of. And I'll tell you a little bit about um, him in a moment. So emotional intelligence actually embraces sort of two aspects of our intelligence. There's a piece around understanding yourself, your goals, your intentions, your responses and behavior but also understanding all of these things on the part of other people and their feelings towards what is actually going on. Okay. And I'm going to sort of keep bringing you back to this point, in that this is in as much as you are somebody who has people who are reporting to you. So whether that's a direct line responsibility, so you have direct reports, whether you're part of a project team, or otherwise. And okay. um, I mentioned Daniel Goldman. Um, there's a reference here to one of his books, he's written several, the first one was called Emotional Intelligence. But the one that I tend to recommend to people if they wanted to know more about this is actually working with emotional intelligence because it actually sort of takes into a much more practical domain. But what, Do uh, what Goldman is actually suggesting is that there are sort of five domains to be aware of. The first of this is actually knowing what your emotions are. So there's a piece of awareness. There's a second piece around managing those emotions, so actually being able to just take a step back, think about what's happening, and then actually making a decision as to how to actually work with that. There's a third element around motivating yourself. There's a fourth around recognizing and understanding other people's emotions. And the fifth is around managing your relationship. So you're actually working in relation to others. So another source there. Um, so if you want to look that up further. Okay. Why does it matter? What I would say to you is that the reason this matters so much and increasingly is because technical ability alone doesn't make it effective, particularly when we're actually responsible for other people. Okay. Emotional intelligence is a far greater predictor of your effectiveness. And I just want to share um, some findings with you which sort of reinforce some of the thinking around this. Goldman himself conducted research back in 2004 with 200 um, companies. And that what came out of that was that emotional intelligence is twice as important as IQ for determining success. So how we work in relation to other people is more likely to be an indicator of how successful we are. An IBM study with 1,500 CEOs which was conducted by Lombardo and Robbie in 2011, identified the qualities critical for success in a leadership role as independent for creativity and autonomy. And clearly none of those is around technical ability. And in February of this year, and this is maybe sort of the most relevant at this stage, is that in February of this year, the government published an all-party parliamentary report titled An Enterprise System Fit for an Entrepreneur. And this suggested that entrepreneurial self-efficacy ought to be at the heart of enterprise education. 
And by entrepreneurial self-efficacy, what we're really talking about is the development of creative thinking, use of initiative, problem solving, communication skills, and similar. Um, right, so having shared that with you, I just want to take you back um, to what we mean by emotional intelligence. And then I'll see the four fundamental capabilities um, that Goldman suggests are critical to understanding this. And these are self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, and social skills. Now, I'm not going to dwell on these too hard, um, but you may want to look at them in your own time. But not only is he saying that there's some capabilities, but there's some competencies that actually fit under all four of these. Um, well, you might begin to ask yourself the question of, where am I on this? You know, how um, aware am I? How, how relevant is it for me to manage myself in this area? So these next couple of slides are really for you to sort of look at in your time there. But what I would say is that the critical piece and the real starting thing for this is self-awareness. You can't manage something if you're not aware of it. Okay. And this is the sort of the piece that goes into the personal effectiveness. But in working with relationship with other people, we have to start with ourselves. Okay. And that's really sort of the purpose of the webinar today. So we've got self-awareness, self-management, we've got social awareness and social skills. Um, and it's this ability to manage ourselves that's really critical. So I'm going to ask you at this point, um, and I'm hoping you're going to sort of you know, participate in this. At this point, I'm just going to ask you to uh, grab a sheet of paper and a pen um, and just, just for a moment think back over the last week. And in thinking back over the last week, what I'd like you to just think about is what have been some of the emotions that you have felt okay, over the last week. And I want you to see on the left-hand side of your piece of paper. So if you just list the emotions as you would actually describe them. So there may be things like uncertainty, fear, worry, joy, love, frustration, anger. So I just wanted to list those um, emotions just for a moment. And I'm going to come back to that slide in a second. Um, but yeah, if you could just list them and I'm going to give you a moment to do that. Okay. Now, alongside each of the emotions that you've listed, what I'm asking you to do now is actually note what you think caused you to feel this emotion. So what was the trigger? So was it that you were in a meeting with X person, um, or you were on the bus, and somebody knocked into you, or the person sat next to you had a conversation with you? So what was the emotion, but then what was the trigger? What caused you to feel this. So again, I'm going to just give you a moment to get some responses and then put you through the next slide with you. Okay, so I'm hoping that's long enough. Now, in looking at your list, what I'm asking you to reflect on, and this is again something you might want to take away and, and actually attempt to gain in your own time, but what was the range of emotions that you actually felt? Is there quite a broad range? Is this quite narrow? And what, if anything, do you notice in terms of recurring emotions or themes that may be there. 
And what do you actually notice about the triggers? So are the triggers similar? Are they quite different? Are you aware of what the triggers are or were at that time? Um, and the last question I'd ask you is, does recalling your emotions make you more aware of them? So are you actually already aware of what you're feeling, sort of moment to moment, experience to experience? Or do you have to purposefully sort of look back and say, oh yeah, actually I did feel that. Mm, yes, this is what might have caused it. Okay. Now, what I'm going to take you back to is this definition that personal effectiveness is being able to actually know, it's about knowing what your style and qualities are, being able to modify them in relationship to the task, the situation, and the individual. And the reason I'm showing you this again is because there is much evidence to suggest that when we're dealing with people, we're as leaders, as managers, when you're dealing with people, you're not dealing with creatures of logic, but creatures that have actual emotion. Okay, and this is a quote from Daniel Carnegie, which I quite like. It's quite simple, but to the point. Um, and the reason I'm showing, sharing this piece with you is because what I'd like to do is actually share this slide with you. Now, this is a little bit complicated, but it's not at all. Some of you may have seen this already. It's a very simple iceberg exercise. It's called the iceberg because the triangle was the iceberg of the, the iceberg itself, and then the main blue line that you see running across the page is sort of like the waterline. And with any iceberg, there's the piece that you see above the waterline, which in this diagram is your conscious mind. And what your conscious mind does is actually helps us to sort of put stuff out into the world, what we do and what we say. So this is what people experience of us individually. But then what goes on below the line are all the things that drive what we present to others. And those drivers are our thoughts and feelings, our values and our habits, our expectations and our attitudes. Now, just as we each have this going on for ourselves, and this goes on all the time, moment to moment in your waking hours, okay, it's also going on for the people that we actually come into contact with. So this is the people you're in relationships, particularly in your role with leaders and managers. Now, this is important because just as I have my needs and expectations, want to it, they have theirs. And in your role in managing others, what we're always striving towards is this possibility of compromise or collaboration, whichever you choose to call it. And what we really mean by that is the possibility of a win-win outcome. So our understanding of ourselves, our understanding in relation to others, is really predicated on this notion that we're going to try and work together on things in common and have mutual benefit. That's what we're really intending to do. I did want to just spend a few moments with you um, looking at sort of what it means to be a leader, what it means to be a manager. And the reason I wanted to do this is because I was quite keen in my initial conversation with America that the focus on the, on the webinar on both um, leadership and management roles. And this is because for me there's something fundamentally um, in, com fundamentally in common um, in both roles, however we might understand them. Um, and here, is, um, I've just basically pulled out some of the definitions that really resonate for me, both for um, leadership and management. So there's some there as well. And again, you know, I would suggest that you maybe want to go off and you know, look at some of these people and what you need for them to be in the role that they have. Um, but just to go back to this one, leadership, you know, quite often is associated with being quite visionary and sort of re leading people, winning hearts and minds, and all those things that are quite critical to success, both individually and collectively. Management, I would stress, is pretty similar in that what we're trying to do is actually work through others. Okay. So you may not be leading from the front so much, but what you're striving to do is actually get done willingly and well by others the things that we set out to do. 
So there is a piece that I think is in common in both roles that actually stress the importance of personal effectiveness and getting the best from other people. Okay. Um, I wanted again to sort of give you something to take away. Again, you something that you could use personally, um, but also with other people. Um, so I'm going to ask you to grab a second sheet of paper and make four columns. One, two, three, and four, um, similar to what you see on the slide. And then it's a simple exercise in that for each of the columns that you're heading up, I want you to look at the words in that column on the slide. And simply put a tick, for instance, under column one, if you think the word charisma reflects a quality that you have. Okay? So look at each of the words and put a tick under each column heading for the words that best describe you. Now, you may be tempted to tick all of them, but what I would say is you need to be a little bit more discerning than that and honest with yourself and say, okay, is this really a word that best describes you? It may help you to think about how others might describe you. Okay, sometimes that helps people. And that's one way in which you might actually use this exercise. You, know, you could actually share it with others and say, can you please perhaps tick the boxes that you think best reflect you? And then if you think there's some commonality here to share it with five people, please do. But if now, I'm going to ask you just a quick tip for each of the words that you think best describes you, and then total up each of those columns. And I'll give you just a moment or two to do that. Okay, I'm hoping you've all sort of had a good go at that. Um, just a couple of things to say to you about the, the words that you see in front of you. So when we look at the list, um, and it's, it's similar with lots of exercises of this nature, often your first response, your instinctive response, is probably the best response. Okay? So what I would say is try not to second guess yourself or miss any words out and say, oh, well, I'm going to come back to that one in a second. Because then you start thinking about it sort of in relation to other things. So I'd say, you know, your, be your first response is often your best response. Um, what I'm going to do is um, just ask you to look at your total scores and circle the one that actually is your predominant style. Okay. And most people will have one that is a predominant style. On occasion, you might have two scores that are quite close to one another. So you still have one that's predominant and then another that is actually sort of very close, perhaps. What this tells you is something about the range of leadership style that you're able to exhibit, that you're able to pull on. So this is a range that you have available to you currently. Okay. So this is your current situation. Now, um, having done that, um, I want to just share this with you. Okay. So the reason this is actually split into four is because each of the columns um, relates to a particular style. And the four styles we have here are directive, coaching, influencing, and collaborative. Now, directive 
is a leader who has control of his plans, his decisions, and he's pretty much set himself along it. A more coaching style would be someone who focuses on developing and involving other people. An influencing style, leaders with confidence in their own ability, can do things, and you know, are drive to achieve things. And collaborative, I would say that people who are quite keen to create harmony and work with and through others. Now, I'm sharing this with you, and you might be looking at it and think, hmm, that's not how I would describe myself. But what I would say is, you know, the schools that we have um, are in direct relationship to the, the tips that we put in each of the columns. So if any of this looks like a surprise to you, and then ask you to take some time after the webinar at some point and um, to just think back on that. You say, well, why did I choose these words? If they feel like a surprise to me, why is that? Okay. Now, um, let's move on. The reason to share this exercise with you is because what I'd like you to do is think about the range that you appear to be using at the moment um, and ask yourself some questions. So the best way to do this would be to think about where you've been in relationship with others. If so this is about you as a leader or manager. Um, and often in that type of scenario. So think about a recent leadership situation and the way that you dealt with it. And I'm asking you just to do this for a moment, um, although you might want to do it more for the again later. So did I get the best out of the situation? How did the person or people that I was working with actually react to me? And are there other approaches that might have been more effective? So it might have been more useful both for myself and for others, but I used a different style. And I'll give you just a moment to reflect on that. Okay. Now, um, I, uh, I appreciate you're not having very long to reflect on these things, but the reason to ask you to think about yourself in relationship with others is really so you can ask yourself the question, you know, is what I am doing helping me or hindering me on what we're actually seeking to achieve? And if it's not very helpful, if something is getting in the way, then what might I do about it? That's the that's the piece that moves you into management, control, so on and so forth, of your emotions. But before we move on from this, I want to just share um, a couple of thoughts with you about the, this particular questionnaire that I've used with you. There is no suggestion that any one style is the most effective. There are advantages and disadvantages of all four styles. And I've included a couple of slides here that actually tell you or suggest um, some of what those might be. So you will have these available to you. Now, the reason I'm quite keen for you to, I guess, appreciate that there are advantages and disadvantages to each is that what we need to think about is the context in which we're operating. So you need to be able to vary your style according, as we said earlier, the task, the situation, and the people that you're working with. That's the idea. So the most effective leaders and managers are those people that can do that. They can actually adapt themselves in order to be more effective. Okay? That's the piece around emotional intelligence, being able to vary your style as needed. Okay. And then, Two final things that I want to share with you, um, and again, if this is sort of trying to be quite practical to give you stuff to take away with. Um, this last couple of pieces is really a really tool that you may be able to, to share with your team. So hopefully, you know, something practical to take away there. So the first of these, um, and so you may some of you may be familiar with this, is Tuckman's teams. 
Now this is a well known model um, for team formation and development. So really for how people work together. And I wanted to put this out of um, sometimes the you know, the most effective things are the most simple. And this really is a very simple way of understanding some of the process that you and your team may well be going through. So you will be in one or more of these stages at any given time. So what Tuckman is suggesting is that all teams will come together. So there is a forming piece. You actually call life again around a common um, agreed objective. Um, there is a purpose. There is a reason for you to come together in this particular formation. So there is a forming piece. And then I'm going to move through these quite quickly. There is then a piece around what he called storage. So this is really where we're checking one another out. Um, people are making um, judgments about what people are bringing to the table, what others are bringing to the table, what parts people play. Um, there may well be some friction as we begin to understand one another, we begin to sort of, you know, um, there's a bit of tug and pull, really, um, in order to establish people's roles um, and purpose within the, the team itself. And then often, um, having experienced that, teams will move into a norming phase. Okay. Now, this norm um, can be highly effective or not. Okay. And I'm sure we can all recall experiences, or perhaps experiences in developers, where things aren't always very positive. But there is a normal phase. Then there is something around performance. So we do something, we, you know, we actually have some output. And having performed, um, there is a feed around a journey in normal. So the suggestion is that having coalesced around a common, agreed purpose, function, etc teams will often come to an end. So once that's been achieved, you're moving on into other things. Now, what I would say to you is that what this model, although it appears to move from you know, one, one area into another, at any given time, um, teams can be in, in one or more of these places. Okay? And you can move back and forth. So you could be a well-established team, there's norms, you're functioning well, you're performing well, and then there may be a new person that comes into the team. So there's going to be some new formation needing to go on. Or it could be performing well, things are being done, established, you know, we're all agreed on what we're doing, we're moving forward, and then something new comes in, you know, a new situation, something in the, in the external environment, or there seems to be some sort of upset amongst the team itself, which might take us into a storming phase. So this is not a linear um, process the team will go through each and every time. But what I would ask you to think about is where are you now in relationship to the people that you're working with? So become aware that this is there is content, you know, this is there are things that you're going to be working on. There's also a process. And then in your role as a leader or a manager, you need to be aware of where, what that process is. So where are you now? How might you move people through the various stages? Because that's your role. You know, your role is to help the people manage themselves in relationship to others in order to be able to be effective. Okay, so your personal effectiveness is actually put into, garnered around the effectiveness of others. And the final thing that I really want to share with you is some things that come from a chat called Patrick Lencioni. And he did Patrick Lenzoni has done a lot of work around effective tools, and what makes it effective He's also actually got quite a lot of work around and generated work around um, dysfunction and ineffective tools. But I've, I wanted to focus on the positive review in that effective tools are those that trust one another, they address conflict, they commit to decisions and plans of action, they hold one another accountable, and they focus on achieving to collective results. And the collective piece is important here because the collective would come out of the fact that it's a team. It's not a group of individuals who are striving to do their own thing and happen to be working together in order to try and do that. This is about teams, people that are committed to one another and to the task in hand. Okay? And the reason I'm sharing this piece with you, as well as the token piece, is that none of this is about technical ability. There are no right or wrong answers here. What there are is, as a sort of some facets that you need to be aware of. 
that can actually help or hinder you as a leader manager, but also your team on what you're striving to do together. So, to finish, what I wanted um, in just to do is to try and bring um, the base elements that I've tried to share with you together and say that you know, in the workplace, we don't exist in a social vacuum. Okay? If you do, then you're not actually working in relationship to others. Okay? So there, there is a, an understanding that this is actually about a common purpose, common goal, common objective and about people coming together. And then the second piece is that being personally effective is being able to connect with people, understand them, build relationships, but so that the, those people that are working with you actually want to do the work that's needed, but actually want to do that with you and for you. And so there's a common understanding, not only about what needs to be done, but about doing it together. And your role as a leader or manager is about helping to facilitate that and being the most effective you can be in relation to it. So I thought I would stop there. So I think that's about 40 minutes. Um, and I thought we might move into questions and see how we go with that. Thank you. That's great. Thank you. Thank you, Fatima. That's really, really. Really interesting, and it's almost it's one of those topics, um, as I guess quite often actually, I feel like this at the webinars that you almost want to be in the same room with people so that you could have a yeah. have a have a really good conversation with the people uh, people around you about this stuff because, like you say, it's not it's not sort of it's not black and white, um, and uh, so it's uh, it sort of does 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 need need that relational relational side to it. But um, so if anyone's got any questions. Please, please do type them in through the chat function, and I'll uh, I, I can read them out. Um, also, I know Fatima that you had your contact details in the beginning, so so uh, um, if people want to get in touch with you afterwards, then then perhaps that's that's okay as well. Sometimes sometimes questions uh, may come up actually a little bit later rather than immediately after after you listen to something, but. I, I did want to ask you um, a couple of things, just something that, that I was thinking while you were, while you were speaking, um, particularly in the context of the entrepreneurs that Unlimited works with. So not all, but often the entrepreneurs we support, they are, they are just at the early stages of, of, their, of setting up their ventures and, and building their teams. So often at the stage where they're looking at looking at just those first steps, bringing in their first one or two employees or volunteers, etc. Um, and, I, and I wondered, Fatima, from your experience of, of having worked with both entrepreneurs but also with big businesses, is there anything that you'd recommend? How, how, would, how would one get off, to a, get off to a really good start with the new team? How would you, are there, are there sort of exercises or processes that people could apply right in the beginning when they are inducting, when they are building that team that would, would ensure that they they would get off to a good start as a team? Does that, does that question make sense? Yes, I mean, absolutely it does. Um, um, what I would say is, and this may just sound like really stating the obvious, but in my experience of actually working with people, you know, various levels and in various sectors and different types of organizations is, the one thing I would really recommend is actually time to get to know one another and actually setting that time aside deliberately in order to do it. Because we quite often assume that, you know, we're going to hopefully recruit people that are just like us, we're going to meet investors who are hopefully going to see, you know, what we're all about and why we're doing what we're doing and really want to sort of, you know, make that commitment. So we're working with stakeholders, we're all pulling in the same direction. And I'm just not sure that that's always the case. So I think there is a, 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 something to be said, a lot to be said actually, for deliberately setting time aside for sort of getting to know one another and then doing that in a deliberate way. So you know, being quite purposeful and saying, so you know, what is it that we might actually share? You know, so 
who are you, where do you come from, what's your background, what really motivates and enthuses you, what inspires you. And some of you know, it sounds cliche to say it, but there are some sort of you know easy questions that you might ask and that you know what's been your greatest achievement to date? And why would you say that? You know, so mm -hmm. what is it? Why is it? Because what that gives you is a sense of, you know, sort of a, a, a person's appetite for something, you know, mm. a sense of achievement. And it can be as different as people are different, but it's, it, they are questions designed to give you an insight to those things that fit on, which are like below the waterline. So people's values, their beliefs, their drivers, you know, what really motivates them, what gets them out of the bed in the morning and mm. really makes them tick. So I'd say, you know, there is something about that. In terms of growing your team, especially if you're quite small and you're, you're really just venturing into that space, I think there's something about having clear questions a recruitment phase. So I'm being quite deliberate in terms of the entrepreneur piece. If you're seeking to recruit, the thing to look for is attitude and mindset. So yes, there is something about competence and ability and what people bring with them. So if somebody's got the right attitude and mindset, a lot of what they need to be able to do, they can often learn. So you need to strike a balance, because especially in the early stages, you need people who are adaptable, flexible, because some of the softer skills are probably more important um, to mm. getting done what needs to be done. Um, so yes, I'd say be deliberate and ask yeah. intimate questions that really give you an insight to what somebody is about rather than simply what they present sort of, you know, to the world. Because we can all present well. Mm. And we can all be you know, sort of quite um, cautious in what we present sometimes, especially when we're new to one another. But how do we get beyond that first stage into what's really going on? Mm. No, thank you. And I think, I think it's probably also then really important that you as a leader you you sort of show example of that. So so if you are inviting others to open up, if, if you are if you are hoping others will will um, you know have an honest conversation and an exchange with you about things that matter most to them, then you you, you probably will need to model that and, and offer that first so that they can see that you are also yes. you know you are also being real here and, and you are you know you know you're talking about what matters to you. Yes. I mean, I have to say, you know, personally, you have to be authentic. So if you're asking something of others, why would you ask that if you're not going to ask it of yourself? Mm. Um, you know, and, and having led teams in various organizations, you know, I would say you need to show integrity. And you set the tone. As a leader, you set the tone. And yeah. the buckle uh, ultimately sets with you as well, you know, sits with you rather. So, you need to decide, you know, what standard you're going to hold yourself to in order to then hopefully be able to hold others to it as well. Okay. I mean, what I, what I would share with you sort of at a very personal level is that I have um, a couple of associates that work with me really closely and we are each very different in terms of our style, you know, how, you know, just really how we present to the world. But what we all share are very strong values in common with one another. Mm. That, you know, that for me is the critical piece. But I can trust that when we're out there, when they are out there representing my business, I know what that means. You know, and I can trust that they're going to you know, work with clients in a way that would be similar to myself in terms of how the relationship is established, maintained, and then nurtured, supportive, etc. Yeah. Okay. Another question. Another question that I um, I, I thought of was: um, Is there anything um, that you do with with any leaders that you work with in terms of I don't know frameworks or tools that the leader could use then with their employee to help the employee to to um, to understand what their what, what they what they are most sort of passionate about and where their strengths and and perhaps weaknesses lie, because to sort of help the employee with this, that self awareness if it's not immediate. I mean, some people know that very clearly and and can articulate it clearly as well. 
but let's say you have a team and you and you'd want them to be able to sort of tap into the thing that is most meaningful for them have you ever come across that and is there something you've offered to the leader as a kind of tool that they can then use to help their employee with that well, the, what comes to mind immediately for me is um, a piece around a sort of a common understanding about sort of what your values are. Yeah. So there are there are one or two exercises, and I, um, I guess this shows my sort of newness to the whole webinar situation. <laughs> but I'm happy to share with you in order that you might share with others if you want to or if they want to, um, or people can contact me directly. But you know, there's a conversation to be had about. You know, what is it that's most important to you? And using simple exercises, like you can have words on cards that you share with people and say, which words resonate best? You yeah. know, if you're actually wanting to commit to this tool, you know, what would that look like? You know, how, how do we actually begin to articulate sort of a, a common understanding of what we're all about? But, you know, simple tools that you can use quite quickly in team settings just to get people to sort of coalesce a day around, you know, a few words. And then having a conversation about, you know, so when I pick the word, I guess, let's say integrity, for instance, you know, what does that actually mean to me? How do I demonstrate that? Mm. You know, when you're demonstrating that, what does that mean to you? So there is some, you know, you're beginning to sort of unpack, A, what's important to people in being a part of this too, but then do we actually understand it to be the same thing? So, you know, what does that look like in this organization, in, in this team? And, and I think that's an important piece. So if I give you the example, this week I was talking with a client who was talking about being a learning organization. And their concern was really about, you know, is this an out-of-date premise? So, you know, is it a bit dated? Is it, you know, is, it, is it still current, I guess, is what they were saying. And I said, I'm not sure about whether it's current or not current. The, the question I would ask you is, is this a phrase that actually reflects the type of organization you want it to be? And do you understand what you mean when you say we are a learning organization? Yeah. So it's beginning to sort of unpack what some of this actually means for us here in this place of work. Great. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you, Fatima, for that. Um, I think we are, we're coming to the end, end now. So unless anyone's got any, um, any other questions, uh, we, we, I think we will wrap up. Um, I just want to say a, a big thank you. Thank you to you, Fatima, for, for, uh, for joining us and, uh, and, uh, and running, running this webinar with us. Um, as I've said, we have been recording this and we will be uploading this um, onto, our, onto our YouTube uh, webinar library. Um, I can send the link to that to everyone who, who have been listening. So you can also, you can listen to this again or you can listen to some of the past webinars that we've done. Our next webinar will be uh, will be in just over a week's time. Uh, it'll be Tuesday the 30th of September and that will focus on social impact measurement. So creating a social impact measurement report, just a one page one. So rather than a really long one, we thought we'll just uh, share with you share with you a little bit about how to how to sort of start that process off um, in, in, a, in a simple format. So again, I'll, I'll email details on how to register for that afterwards. So uh, Fatima, unless you've got any final final words, then um, I'm, uh, I'm just going to say goodbye. Okay, I just want to say thank you very much. Brilliant. Thank you so much. And thanks everyone for listening and have a really great rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Bye.